Hello and welcome back to Talking Europe. Another week, another summit on migration. More talks, plans to work together as a bloc and with Turkey, a call once again to action. The EU is now looking at redirecting funds earmarked for catastrophes and conflict outside the bloc and using them internally, some 700 million euros over the next three years. But for now, thousands of people are still stranded, faced with barbed wire fences and being pushed back with tear gas. So will money solve matters and how quickly are we now going to see things change? To help us understand the latest developments and give us his view, we're joined by Mr Manfred Weber. Uh, morning, uh, good afternoon Mr Weber. Now you're a German MEP, a leader of the largest uh, party here in the European Parliament, the European People's Party, or EPP. Uh, firstly, let me start. We've seen again another summit with the EU and Turkey. In a way, though, it seems to be our main strategy is, is keeping the Syrian refugees in Turkey, possibly even sending them back. Is that a, not a bit of a cop-out on the half of the European Union? Is it not a bit not-in-my-backyard situation? Well, first of all, it's needed to talk to each other. That's the principle of Europe. We have uh, independent states which are coming together in a union, which meet each other in the council meetings. And that is the idea of Europe, to talk to each other. Uh, I'm, and we in the EPP group, in the European Parliament, we are sometimes not really happy to see a lot of talks, a lot of uh, decisions, a lot of paper, but not so much implementation, not so much actions. And all the people all over Europe are expecting actions. And that is what my wish is, to have really an action plan on the table to do what is needed to solve the migration thing. Uh, now, one thing we have heard talk about, uh, notably from Greece, but I believe it's supported by your native country, Germany, is the idea of uh, and deciding that Turkey is a safe third country. Now, not talking about a safe country of origin, so we're not saying that, that, but we could basically send refugees that arrive into Greece back to Turkey. Uh, do you think that's part of the solution? Absolutely. So it must be part of the solution because we are talking about Syrian refugees starting in Syria, in Aleppo, where we see today the pictures, in the, the, the images in the, in, the, in, the, in the television, and they are going through Turkey, Greece, so the Balkan route, and we have only, the only one solution, to solve it together with Turkey. But Turkey already means... has two and a half million Syrian refugees. We are talking about those who are illegally going to the European Union. So when, we to, when you see the numbers of Frontex, our European agency for border protection, then you see that a lot of people arriving in Lesbos, in Greece, are not refugees, are not Syrian refugees. We have a really? big number yeah, from Pakistan, we have from Morocco, and the Turks helps us really for the moment. They introduced, for example, visa regime to Morocco, to Pakistan, to Iraq, to avoid this misuse of the positive thing that we want to help people in need. So what about the actual genuine, because a lot of the NGOs have put out figures saying 70-80% of those arriving are from Afghanistan or Syria or even a few from Eritrea. Should they be allowed to stay or is it possible that Greece would also send them back to, to, to Turkey? I mean, the European Union is 500 million people. Surely we can play our part. The United Nations tells us that uh, we have 60 billion uh, people in the world who are fleeing, fleeing from civil war regions. So this figure shows totally, absolutely clearly for everybody that Europe cannot solve the problem on a global level with welcoming everybody to Europe. So that's why we have to find another way to bring two sides together. On the one hand, a clear and strong border protection. Each and every European citizen is expecting from Europe to defend the border in a way to check who is coming. And on the other hand, there is one side of the medal to border control. The other side is to be open for refugees, to offer contingents, to offer clear figures to Turkey, to Jordan, to Lebanon, such poor countries who are doing so much efforts for the refugees, though Europe has to, to be helpful. That is what we have to talk to our Middle and East European friends in Slovakia, in Hungary. We have to help. But on the other hand, we need border control. Both sides are needed. OK, because it does seem we, we want to somewhat push the problem back to Turkey. Turkey, for its part, wants to open safe zones in Syria and keep refugees back there. I believe German Chancellor Angela Merkel also supports that idea. Could we actually see that be, being brought forward, that we're really keeping them as close to home as possible, but leaving people in a war zone? Well, the biggest part of the Syrian refugees wants to go back home. So that's clear. They want to stay in the neighbourhood of their home, of their country. Uh, and uh, the ceasefire for the, for the moment works. That is a very positive news for Syria. Uh, hopefully uh, 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 a promising uh, message for the future. Not much infrastructure and, left. Yes, and, uh, and, and that's why to keep the people so close as possible to their home. That's for sure also in the interest of the people. But we have specific groups. Think about uh, elderly people. Think about children. We have specific groups who have a higher need of help, of protection. And probably we can keep these specific groups 
to Europe. We have can to bring them here. So we have to find a balanced way. The most important message is that not the smugglers, not the mafia should decide who comes to Europe. When you pay a lot, you have to get a possibility to come to Europe. The state must organize it and the United Nations must organize it. That's why we offer from a European Commission's point of view, Jean-Claude Juncker offered this idea of fixed contingents, resettlement, quota system in the European from... Union, quota, okay. burden sharing in Europe and border protection. Yeah. This is a package. The quota system which has completely failed across the European Union. It, it, it doesn't work for the moment, I have to say, because the future is totally clear. We cannot solve this problem only with, uh, with asking a few member states to take over the burdens. Everybody has to contribute. OK, and before we look uh, slightly closer at uh, the EU issues, let's take a quick catch up now, snapshot view of what actually came out of that uh, summit on EU, Turkey and the migration issue. 15 hours of negotiations with Turkey and European politicians have announced the outline of a deal over migration with Ankara. The days of irregular migration to Europe are over. Furthermore, we welcome new bold proposals made today by Turkey to address this crisis. Bold proposals which Europe has all but accepted. Pending further discussion at an EU summit next week, it seems Turkey may be getting its way not just over easing continental visa restrictions for its citizens, but accelerating long fractious and moribund discussions over Ankara's accession to the EU. More than that, Turkey demanded Europe take in Syrian refugees in return for those who don't qualify for protection, such as economic migrants, on a one-to-one -one basis. It would break this vicious cycle of entering illegally on a boat and then as a result being given the right to stay in Europe. We will have to turn this around in order to achieve orderly migration. Europe pledged 3 billion euros for Turkey in humanitarian aid in November, though ahead of the summit Turkey wanted it doubled. The nation's prime minister, though, put a different face on that particular issue. Turkey is not demanding any money from anyone. Turkey is spending from national budget for the refugees. I want to make it clear. We are demanding fair burden sharing for Syrian refugees. Turkey's taken in at least 2.75 million refugees, more than any other country worldwide. However, with thousands still trying to get to Europe every day, the EU is desperate to control the migratory overspill however it can. So, before we move on totally from the Turkey issue, uh, Mr. Weber, EU's relations with Turkey have really changed a lot because of this migration issue. You know, we're now saying it is a safe country to send people back to, but there's still the conflict with the Kurdistan Workers' Party. There's uh, growing alarms with uh, stamping out opposition, media freedom there. How do you see the EU's relationship with it? On the one hand, Turkey is an important partner, is a neighbour of the European Union. It's, an, it's, a, it's a state where we are negotiating about enlargement, even of enlargement. So that is the one side of the, of the perspective to Turkey, that we have to work together as normal partners, let me say, to solve problems together. And we have to respect what the Turks already did, two and a half millions inside of Turkey is a big achievement and a big uh, effort which the Turks are already uh, did for Syrian refugees. That is one side. On the other hand, uh, we should not be blind on the problems inside of Turkey. And the European Commission in the, in the development uh, uh, report of the enlargement process made very clear that a lot of developments, especially on media uh, freedom, especially on guaranteeing fundamental rights, on the respect of rule of law inside of Turkey, we have a lot of problems and a lot of difficult, negative developments during the last month. So mm. we should do both. On the one hand, practical solutions. It's a neighbour. We have to work with them. And it's better to have a stable Without government. Without the migration issue, do you think we would work less with them? Uh, I have to say that in the last years, there was too less awareness about the need to work together with Turkey in solving the big uh, problems on the table. And that is probably one of the problems we have today on the table. But now I think everybody is aware, all over Europe is aware that there is a need to work together. Let's move on to this idea of the new funds for the migration issue internally in the European Union. 700 million euros over the next three years. These are funds that were earmarked for abroad, now being brought back. That's pretty much a first for the EU. It really shows that we're in mega dire straits. Could it yeah, work? Yeah. It shows, first of all, we are in big troubles. That normally money which is received for 
uh, for outside uh, questions is now uh, is now needed for inside. So we have humanitarian uh, catastrophe or difficult developments inside of the European Union. Everybody who sees the pictures from the Macedonian Greek border knows that this is really a question for us, a problem for us. But it's on the other hand, it's good that we have all these funds, we have all this money, we can have, we can do our efforts to solve the situation. And once again, we have to bring always the two sides of the medal together. On the one hand, to treat people as individuals, as, as people who need respect uh, and so on. And on the other hand, to be clear, illegal migration is not allowed in yeah. no see, member when states. When you see those over. images, as you mentioned, the Macedonian Greek border, when you see those pictures, it doesn't look like or exactly a humanitarian response for the time being, at least. What do you think, though, about the pressure the EU is putting on Greece? It is the country geographically. Uh, it's not its own fault that it's the country really on the front line of all those people arriving. Uh, do you think it's fair that, that Greece is being put under so much pressure and accused almost by the other EU? Uh, EU member states that it's not doing enough? We cannot uh, uh, let uh, Greece alone, that's for sure. We need money, we need help, we need assistance. On the other hand, we have to say that the communist uh, uh, government that Tsipras did in the last years no efforts to do their job on the border. They have the, the, one of the biggest armies all over Europe, so the capacity to protect the border is there, but they didn't use it, they didn't do anything. They simply said, welcome, made a fingerprint, and then there is Germany, please go. And that is not an European behavior, that is the other side of the medal. And when we are really having respect for all the migrants who are coming, when we are asking for respect about humanitarian behavior, then it's fair that we also ask the migrants to behave in this manner. That means everybody who is coming to Europe has to respect our culture. We have the Cologne development in our mind where we had difficult development. At the end, how and many is, were actual That means That means that everybody though. who is in the European Union, who gets protection in the European Union, has to respect our fundamental ideas, respect for women and so on. That is also what we have to guarantee in the interest of a positive development. Now, we mentioned there how the quota system hasn't worked as yet. You're slightly more pos positive perhaps than, than a few others, but we have seen a lot of solidarity break down completely across the European Union. Very recently we saw Austria put this uh, quota, this cap, on the number of asylum applications it's uh, going to accept on a daily basis. There's rumours Germany is going to do the same. You have to talk to the German government about this. I only can say as an European Acceptable. politician that uh, if we go on this line to introduce national measures, we are risking a lot. We are damaging and probably destroying the Schengen idea, one of the most important things for the daily life of people. Technically, are, does it, Schengen are, is dead right now. It's not dead. It's not dead. It's under pressure. But because all over Europe, when you when you go uh, when you go uh, from Germany to other countries, so in a lot of regions, it is still working. But it is strongly under pressure, and I want to rescue it in on in the interest of the people of the European Union, because everybody enjoys to live in an open and free European Union. And that's why everybody, as politicians on national level, has to recognize, please stop your behavior in thinking only in national interests. Because that will, at the end, lead to a situation the where we destroy a lot in the European Union. We need a European solution. Well, one country that's not a member of Schengen and is questioning its very membership of the EU is, of course, the United Kingdom. Uh, we saw there uh, David Cameron, Prime Minister, take away this new reform deal from uh, Brussels. Uh, changes in the relationship that the UK could have with the EU if, of course, people there vote to stay in. Uh, however, a lot of people in the Leave campaign over in the UK saying that actually uh, none of these reforms are in place yet and it could all be thrown out by the European Parliament. As the leader of the biggest party, tell us, is there a chance of that? What's the likelihood? Absolutely. We stick to the agreement. The agreement is a fair deal for Britain. Cameron fought a tough fight and, uh, and, and, and debate in the Council and he achieved a lot for Great Britain. So the deal is on the table. If the Brits vo vote us, and it's up to them now to decide, it's not our business, it's up to British people to decide. We are a free and, and voluntarily organized uh, union, so it's up to them. If they say yes to Europe, then we are a credible partner, we will deliver. But on the other hand, I also have to clarify, if there is a no vote, there will be no renegotiations. So the deal is on the table, yes or no, leave it or take no it. No second referendum. Uh, now, that's uh, you're the leader of the biggest party saying we're ready to sign up to the reforms. However, the leader of the socialist uh, group, which is the second biggest party, he says that, hang on a second, he feels that some of the welfare benefits are discrimination, so he definitely wants to question those. So technically, these could be thrown out still. A lot of socialist leaders were in the uh, council meeting present and I count very strongly on, 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 our, on our credibility that at the end the European institutions will follow this deal. 
uh, after a positive vote of the British voters. When really the British citizens would say, OK, we take it and we want to stay in a family together because then we are stronger as Brits. Uh, if this will be the outcome, then I'm sure that Europe will deliver, will be a credible, credible, credible partner. As you say, one of the big wins for David Cameron was perhaps uh, this issue of welfare benefits, notably the child benefits, uh, uh, paying slightly less to children of people working in the UK who live abroad from their parents. Germany might be interested in adopting the same thing, and I believe for Germany it would be a lot more money saved every year, 100 million euros a year. Is this, is part of what the UK negotiated with the EU open to everybody then? Should we, might we see other countries jump on board? From 2020 on, it's open for everybody, yes. But the problem is a totally different one. Sorry, we are talking about the question whether a member state, state, state should leave or should stay. And the most debated question is the child benefit question. Is this really, makes this really sense? Sorry, the Brits have to discuss about is it better to stay in the European Union because Putin is doing an imperialism, a new imperialism? Is it better to stay in the European Union because for trade agreement with America, it's better to be part of a big family, of a strong economic family, the European Union? Or is it better to negotiate a loan with the Americans? Or having the migration thing in mind, is it better to stabilize Syria alone as Brits or together with the European family? That are the questions of the day. Mm -hmm. In a digital world, we have so much challenges uh, ahead of us. And the question is really, is it better to be alone or is it better to stay together as Europeans? And hopefully we can convince the people that it's better to stay together. And it's not up to child benefits, you see. That is uh, what I have to say, that the, that the priorities, uh, we have to set the priorities in a good way. OK, well, let's end it on that note, Mr. Weber. Thank you so much for your time and joining us Thank here you. on France 24. Uh, thanks also to you at home for having watched. That brings us to the end of this edition of Talking Europe.